try to figure out of this person, you know that the month or two into it, I felt Good morning. Mm. I slept in this morning a little bit, or like I woke up sleepy. You know when you wake up and you're like, that wasn't enough. <laughs> that was me this morning. Um, last night we went to go see Oppenheimer. Um, it was a really good movie. It was long as fuck, but like I was saying to Brandon afterwards, like it didn't feel long. You know, I feel like when you go into movies sometimes and you know that it has a really long runtime, like three hours or whatever, you kind of sit through the movie being super aware of how long it is and like wondering where you are currently in like the length of the movie. You wonder how much time is left. But yeah, no, it was really good. It was really like immersive. I didn't have that thought. I was just like completely following along for the story and I think it was really well made. I'm a fan of Christopher Nolan films, most of them, but yeah. Hi, I haven't spoken yet on the vlog. Welcome to my vlog. Welcome to my silly little mind. My dark twisted <laughs> mind. Um, yeah, hi, today's Wednesday. I have a week left in my vlogging period for this vlog. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do like a week in my life or like days of the week kind of format here. I'm trying to think of like like more interesting ways to like film these vlogs. I want to, you know, play a little bit with my videos, but we'll see what my brain has the capacity to do. Today's Wednesday. As we all know, this is my midweek less responsibility day. I want to clean a little bit, clean like the kitchen and do some dusting or something. And then, yeah, I think I'm going to work on my comic. I have not worked on it since I finished those thumbnails that you guys saw in my last vlog. Yeah, I haven't started on the page production yet. I have had the opportunity to do so since I finished the thumbnails, but I just haven't because it... I'm procrastinating it because it's scary. Today I have some space, so I'm gonna sit down and just try to figure out the first page. Um, because I feel like the first page is gonna take the longest. I'm gonna have to figure out what kind of like... I have an idea of what kind of like style I want to do or like the line quality and like shading and things like that. Um, but it's just a bit of a... a bit of a task to get that first page done. So I'm gonna... that's gonna be my like one task for today. And then maybe if I feel like it, there's like a couple other side tasks that I can do. But um, yeah, next Wednesday, so a week from now, I'm going to Montreal and I've been to Montreal a couple times. Um, last year I went twice in like like a month apart. Um, the first trip I went with some friends just to like 
see the city for the first time and have like a little vacation. And then the second time I went along with my friend Morg who was getting sent there by her company for a work trip and she invited me to tag along, so I did. And then so yeah, this time she's going for another work trip and invited me, so I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. I didn't vlog those other times that I was in Montreal. I thought about it, but I didn't. This time I think I will vlog. I think I will try and have the audacity to do that. Montreal's a little scary because I don't speak French and I'm scared of... <laughs> I'm scared of people being annoyed with me that I don't speak French. Everybody speaks English there, but like people like to speak French. The like Quebecois, Quebec Quebecers like to speak French. Um, but yeah, I will try and be my bravest and build up the courage to do some dumb tourist bullshit with my camera. So yeah, let's let's get into this motherfucking Wednesday. How about? So yeah, I'm, I'm working on this page here. I wanted to, you know, spend time on it and make sure I liked how it was going so that it could kind of like set the stage for the rest of the pages, which is, you know, a decent amount of pressure <laughs> to, to put on myself. But um, yeah, I ended up going in and doing a second sketch. I know that I did talk about, I don't know if it was my last vlog or the blog, vlog before that, but I talked about how I was doing my thumbnails pretty tight so that I could just go straight in with um, line art. So yeah, I don't know. When I when I blew up the thumbnail, it like, I, I was scared. I didn't want to go straight in with line art. I didn't trust myself enough to be able to draw correctly. I don't know what it is. I like, I often like doubt my own artistic skill, even though I know that I can draw and I've proved it to myself many times but something about like taking on a, a project as big as this um, made me feel like I needed that extra guidance. Yeah I feel like I don't know for the longest time like I didn't do any comic stuff or like I, I had ideas for comics or I, like I really wanted to draw a comic but um, I would always tell myself that like I'm not good enough yet. I should you know, practice anatomy more, I should practice backgrounds more, I should, you know, get better at doing this, this, and that. And I don't know, like a good example of just like going for it and doing the comic anyways, like if you look at, um, I think like most long-term like manga or comics that, that are made from like a single, single artist, you can tell like the first couple volumes, the first few volumes are always like not as good as the later volumes. And that's because like, you know, naturally artists get better with time, especially working on like giant projects like a long-term comic or manga. So yeah, I try to remind myself of that when I, you know, get the self-doubt in my head about like how I'm not good enough yet to do a, a comic because with that perspective, I'll never be good enough. So yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta start and, um, You'll always keep growing and you'll always keep getting better. And the only thing that you can do to help you keep getting better is to just do the thing that you want to do. Okay, hi, I'm back. <laughs> As you can see, I'm working on this commission next. I just wanted to talk about like cars a little bit. Um, I started drawing cars in like 2019, 2020, um, just because of like Brandon, my boyfriend, he's a big car guy. And so that influence kind of sparked an interest in me to try and learn how to draw cars. And it's taken like a lot of practice, definitely like the first few cars that I did draw were a little bit like sad, a little bit wonky. So like obviously with time you get better at it, but drawing cars is, isn't much unlike like figure drawing. It's all about like looking at your subject 
based on like the shapes, kind of breaking it down, really paying attention to like the angles and like adding detail where, where you need to add detail. So yeah, I know that like drawing cars can seem super intimidated. I was super intimidated for the longest time before I like took the leap and decided to try and draw some. I don't know, if you like cars, give it a try. Like it def there's, a, there's a learning curve for sure, but once you kind of understand how the shapes kind of go and like how the perspective tends to work with them, then it's not that crazy. This is a very voiceover heavy vlog. I hope you guys are liking this. <laughs> um, but yeah, here I'm just like going through. I, I was moving on to the next page or whatever of my comic and I realized that I would benefit from having some sort of guide as to what the room looks like. I feel like, I don't know, just in terms of like when I do storyboarding or when I imagine any kind of setting and there needs to be like multiple camera angles and stuff around the room, it's um, very helpful to have like a guide of like, okay, so if the camera is pointing this way, then there's a door here and then the tatami mats line up here. And then, um, you know, there's a drawer over here. It's all, it's just to like make sure that everything's consistent. I know that like 99% of people aren't gonna notice these things, but something about my like, type A brain <laughs> needs everything to make sense. That's the same with like the um, the little stick in her hair. When I was doing that in the thumbnails, I was like kind of tripping myself out because the first time that you see it is like looking at her head. But then the next time that you see it, she's looking in a mirror. So I was like, okay, wait, is, on, is it on the left or the right? And I'm like kind of bad at left, lefts and rights. So I like switched it to one side and I was like, wait, that's not right. And then I had to like erase it and go back and switch it again, but um, all for consistency. So yeah, as you can see, um, I'm starting off with, or I've, I've started off with a sketch again for this page. Um, this was the first page that you kind of get into like seeing bodies and faces and things like that. I kind of had to figure out what I wanted the style of the face to be. I'm not trying to overthink it too much. Like um, I have that comic book that I'm referencing, the, the Gleam, book by Freddie Carrasco. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of referencing that as like line quality reference, just like something to look at to remind myself that like the lines don't need to be like perfectly tight and like perfectly clean. Um, what I really like about um, his work, Freddie Carrasco, is like it's very like loose and like energetic and messy and like whatever, you know, it's not perfect. So yeah, just having that on the side was really helpful in kind of making me feel a little bit better because if, if this artist that I really, really enjoy their work and I think is amazing can do lines that are like shaky and squiggly, then I can do lines that are a little bit imperfect as well and it'll looks, look good still. So yeah, in my sketchbook, I think in my last vlog, it might've been in, um, I kind of did some figuring out of like what I wanted the main character, this lady, to look like. Um, just in terms of like the eyebrow shape and like the where her wrinkles are and like whatever, just like the kind of visual language that I wanted to be consistent so that like when you look at um, this drawing of a of this person, you know that that's her. Um, I'm trying to lean into like my own style as much as I can while still being simple. So I feel like each of the characters kind of need um, those bits about them that like differentiate each of them, like different hairstyles, different whatever, but like in the face as well. I try my best not to fall into um, the same face syndrome or whatever. I used to be like that. And then I would see like memes about it, how like some artists, like nothing, nothing wrong with this. Like a lot of anime artists do this. Um, but like 
multiple drawings of like different characters you could like literally swap out the hair and then they look the same because the faces are all the same and that's kind of like the basis of what the anime style is or like many drawing styles are but i kind of i enjoy when you know art and like storytelling um they put a priority on like differentiating facial features a little bit and like describing the character visually through their facial features and using that as like another tool for storytelling and like developing who the character is and all that fun stuff. Hey, happy Friday. So yeah, I'm working on my comic and I just finished the second page. And if you've seen in my clips and in some past vlogs as well, I've talked about this. Uh, it's like a collection of comic stories by Freddy Carrasco. I really love his work and I'm basically using this book as like a reference for um, the kind of vibe that I want and like, I don't know, I just really love like the line quality and the style and stuff. And I feel like my, my nature or like what I tend to do is like overwork things or like overthink the sketch and like I need to get it kind of like perfect for myself to feel comfortable to you know, go in with the line work. And I talked about doing my um, thumbnails in a way that was like a little bit extra and a little bit like a little more refined so that I can just go in with line art. But with these first couple pages, I haven't been doing that because I don't know, I'm like, so this is like the, if you can see it. This is the thumbnail blown up for this page. And like, it's fine, right? Like you get the gist of what's happening, but looking at it like this, I don't know, I'm like psyching myself out. So then I went in and did like another sketch. And so that takes a while, a lot of like figuring out, making the, the, the drawing a lot more like tight. And then finally, this is the finished page. And like, it's cool and it's fine and it's good, but I'm kind of not liking how clean it is. Like what I really love about um, Freddy Carrasco stuff is, is like it's so expressive and like, um, like the lines are almost like messy a little bit and like jittery. And I don't know, like I did these two pages and I'm kind of like looking through my reference or like this book and there's so much more life and I don't know, something about the line quality of the couple pages that I have done just like isn't giving that for me. So I don't know, maybe I'll, I think I kind of want to redo these pages, maybe trying to do them like faster, maybe now that I have done a couple pages and I know that like, I don't need to overthink my skill basically when I'm going in and doing these, then it'll, have a bit of a looser feel because I feel like like I doubt myself so much and I doubt my skill as an artist that like I feel like I need to have very tight guidelines and a sketch underneath something that is gonna be so final like a comic page when really like like a comic page doesn't need to be technically perfect and the art doesn't need to be completely clean and like perfect as long as you can portray your story in a clear way, then that's really the most important thing. So yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna try and just redo this line work just from the thumbnail and not use the like second sketch that I made. And then maybe that'll like enable me to <laughs> be a little more loose with it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. That's the update. Thank you. 
Okay, yeah, so I'm working on this car commission that I started the other day. Um, I'm not one to take very many commissions. I used to do commissions a bunch for like people that I knew online, kind of like friends, friends of friends. Sometimes people would like hit me up on like DeviantArt or, or my Instagram to ask for a commission. I'd be like, oh my god, yes, of course. But I don't know, I feel like a combination of doing too many commissions that like I'm not excited about or like don't really get my gears grinding and like just saying yes to everything um, has kind of turned me off of uh, commissions for the past while. I do take commissions from like friends as like, you know, yes, I'll, 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 I'll do this commission for you. Um, but I feel like I don't see myself like opening things up uh, kind of like publicly because when it gets too much and I have to like draw too many things and too many portraits of people and too many people's pets and shit like that, it just gets old. <laughs> um, I feel like that's what happened with me when I was at, uh, when I was doing the sketch drive at Odafest. I talked about it in my last vlog. Um, basically I would uh, spend the weekend um, just doing a portrait after portrait, drawing after drawing, commission after commission, request after request. And it was great, like, being able to draw these things for people and, like, when they would come and pick up their portrait or they would see it finished, they were so happy and that was great. Um, but just the over... the overuse? That's not the right word, but, like, the clusterfuck of, of shit that I had to deal with just, like, ruined it for me, I guess. I, I don't want to say ruined. Um, I can definitely still find joy in making art for other people, um, but definitely, like, I feel like this is the way that most artists are. Like, artists just want to draw what they want to draw. They want to make personal work, and unfortunately, that's not the way that life works, because you gotta make money and all that fun stuff, but yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Sunday fun day. Yesterday I literally spent the entire day at my desk working on that commission, watching season five of Love Island USA. Reality TV is like my, it's just my happy place. It's my little guilty pleasure. I find that I watch it more or like I really crave watching it when I'm like, I don't know, like a little bit depressed. <laughs> I feel like I'm not there currently. Love Island is just like my favorite and um, it finally got released in Canada. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going through it slowly. And it's nice um, background entertainment, I guess, while I'm like working on things. Don't get me wrong, like I really love watching well-written, very like good uh, movies and TV. Like the range of things that I watch while I work is like very vast. I watch a lot of like video essays and shit too, but you know, I also love my trash reality TV shows. She's multi-dimensional, you know? But yeah, today I feel like I kind of want to get out of the house and work. I might go to like the library downtown or maybe a cafe. Um, but yeah, I think it would be good to switch up my environment a little today. I'm going to Montreal uh, in just a couple days now and so I'm very excited for that. I'm anticipating 
being there and I'm like thinking about like all the things that I want to film while I'm out there and how scary that's gonna be because so when I was in Houston it was easy to film because I was always with Melissa and it's just easier to pull your camera out and then point it towards yourself when you're with a friend you kind of have that emotional support um, and then in Japan um, when I was kind of like filming a little bit more to be fair I didn't like film myself too much like walking around the only points that I did film myself was when it was like super inconspicuous to do so like when I was like sitting at a table at like a cafe or something drawing then like it's it's no big deal to just like place the camera in front of me but yeah so there's that and then also like the kind of comfort of people mostly keeping to themselves and like you kind of know that like nobody's gonna really call you out even if they are like silently judging you a little bit that's fine but um Montreal is a little scary and I feel like I'm like slowly making my way up to you know feeling brave or like getting braver or trying to get braver at filming myself in public but yeah Montreal is scary because people there are a little more like outspoken and like I don't know if that's a that's just like from my experience I've been there um a couple times but yeah I'm just I know that like it literally doesn't matter like I know that rationally like I can rationalize to myself like with anything other people's judgments or what other people say to you has no power other than the power that you give it so I know that and I know that you know I'm not hurting anybody by doing this like slightly embarrassing thing that's like not even that embarrassing I don't know I'm overthinking it I'm making a big deal out of something that does not need to be made a big deal of so yeah anyways <laughs> maybe I'll try and like be a little bolder today when I go to my little outing spot in filming myself just as like a practice because I need it. Yeah, girl needs the practice. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Are oh, you pretty good, huh? Yeah. I slept in. His balls out today. I wanted to film this little talking bit in the car after I worked at that cafe, but it was way too hot. Like, you know, when your car sits in the sun and it becomes an oven? Yeah, that. So I'm home now. I had a therapy session. This was my second therapy session with my current therapist. It was in person. 
and yeah, it was it was very good. We're still, I feel like we're still trying to like get to know each other and stuff. And it's interesting coming to therapy, like being very aware of like the issues that I have and why and like what the problems are. Um, just because like my, f I feel like my first round of therapy was very like groundbreaking and that I had like a lot of realizations and um, there was just like a lot of like major steps in like becoming aware. But now that I am a little bit more aware, like going to therapy feels different. It's like, I feel like it's gonna be kind of like baby steps from here kind of thing. But anyways, yeah, it was a good session and something that like came up during the session, like near the end, was my therapist. She like drew me this little Venn diagram or whatever, because I was talking about how I, um, I put so much value in like productivity and that is so closely tied with my self-worth. And so when I'm like busy and I'm being productive, then I feel good um, because I'm like distracted by the busyness and I feel like fulfilled in the way that my brain associates being fulfilled with just being busy. But when I'm slow and when I'm not doing much or I feel like burnt out or unmotivated, then that's when I get kind of like depressed or like low because productivity low, self-worth low, right? So anyway, she drew this Venn diagram. One side is emotional and the other side is rational. So the rational side is like, I know, I think this, whatever. And then emotional is I feel this. And then in the middle where those two overlap, she said it was called like the wise mind or whatever, but being able to like view both sides of like being rational, but also feeling your emotions and like validating them. Um, and then making a decision based off of like knowing those two things is where you can like move forward in like a healthy way. And that was like, kind of like, whoa, because like, I definitely, whenever I'm feeling anxious or like self-doubty or whatever, it's very much like, I feel this way and I know that I shouldn't because it's irrational. And like, it's based on like my anxiety or whatever, which is based in irrational fear. And so I get frustrated with myself because, you know, like I, I know these things, but still like I can't get myself to get over them because it's just like my emotions, right? So I feel like that's kind of where the, I don't know, that's all like based in negative self-talk or like a negative view of myself. And that's when it like kind of clicked for me because when I did therapy my last time, like once I was like a, a month or two into it, I felt like I was on top of the world. Like I felt so good and so positive and that's why I stopped doing therapy because I felt like, like I'm good now. I can take what I've learned and kind of go off and be happy for the rest of my life. <laughs> and that was because when I was in therapy, I was like taking self-compassion seriously. And I was like being very aware of how I talk to myself and like the internal dialogue that goes in my brain and making sure that I like catch myself when I am like being hard on myself for no reason. And so after that first round of therapy, when I was like super high, super good, I like kind of let go of that practice of like paying attention to like my self-compassion. And then I started feeling bad again. And then I got like depressed because I was like, man, I was doing so good, what happened? And I just like completely forgot about like the self-love thing. <laughs> and then so now talking to my therapist about this, I'm like, oh fucking yeah. <laughs> that was a thing that I was like actively trying to do and trying to change in my mind. And that's why I felt good because I was being nice to myself in my brain. So that was a really good reminder. Um, so I'm gonna try and like move forward in the next <laughs> rest of my life, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm gonna plan out some, some way to, you know, get back to focusing on how I can improve on my self-compassion and be nicer to myself when I need it. So yeah, that was the insight from today's therapy session. The rest of the day, I think is gonna be like video editing because I gotta edit this vlog. But yeah, if I end up doing anything like cool and arty, you guys will see it. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you guys tomorrow for my last day in the week. Last week in the life. Day of the week. Whatever.
Okay, hi. It's Tuesday and um, yeah, tomorrow I leave for Montreal. So today was mostly just, um, I did a bit of work and then I had a bunch of like errands and things that I needed to do for before I leave. And I'm just packing my backpack right now and I thought I would do a little what's in my bag. Uh, travel edition or whatever. I'm bringing this handy dandy backpack. It was shown in another vlog, but it's just, you know, a good size to hold all of my stuff that I have spread out here, my work stuff, um, this camera, and yeah, it's just, it's great. So yeah, going through the list, let me just make sure I have everything. Okay. So yeah, this is my mouse and mouse pad, got my iPad. And then my, um, my laptop here. I'm gonna probably do a little bit of work while I'm out there, whatever any of my clients need. Headphones, I have the Sony WH... WH-1000XM4, <laughs> those ones. Um, umbrella, it's supposed to rain a little bit while we're out there. Just a few like things, lip stuff, Carmex, mirror. Um, I bought this book. I think I got it from like a secondhand bookstore either when I was in Victoria or Seattle. I think it was when I was in Victoria. Um, I haven't started it yet. It's a bit of a chunky feller, but I kind of like how it's like a little bit more small and compact. While I'm out in Montreal, I'm gonna have like a bunch of time to myself. Like I said, I'm going with my friend who's going there for a work trip. So during the work week, she's gonna be at work. So I'm just gonna be like bouncing around the city by myself and um, working. I'm gonna try and get a bunch of, of progress done on my comic book um, and then doing whatever work I have to do and then like sketchbooking and whatever. So I like bringing a book just for when I like don't really feel like doing anything and I just want to like chill. It's very nice to, to be able to just like pull, pull out a book. My morning pages booklet. Booklet? Notebook. Um, I was debating not bringing this because like I'm on vacation, right? So I don't know if I'm going to be consistent with, you know, writing in this every morning because I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be busy and stuff. But, you know, after my last therapy session talking about how like... I wanna try and do more like active self-compassion and reflection and things like that. I'm gonna bring this and hopefully that'll help with that. Cause I feel like, you know, being compassionate to myself while I'm on this trip will help a lot in like making the trip better for me and more enjoyable. So may as well bring it. Um, this is just a little planner notebook that I write uh, work notes in and I like set up a little like schedule page of um, when I'm out there. I usually use like a bigger, a bigger planner. It's over there, but I don't want to bring that like hefty book just for like one week of scheduling. Um, bringing my sketchbook. This is the sketchbook that I used when I was in Japan. It's a moleskin. And then my pencil case with just the essentials. Dongle, because I have a Mac and a power bank. And that's about it for my backpack. And then I, of course, have to put in the, um, bring you guys, the camera. And then I have this little tiny tripod that's like very compact, um, but it's cool because it like extends. My DSLR, my camera, what I'm filming with right now is like borderline too heavy for this. It's like front heavy. So when I put it on this tripod, tripod, especially when I do the like full extension, I need to make sure that this front leg is like pointing directly where the camera's pointing or it'll just like topple over forward. So that's fun. Um, and yeah, that's it, I think, pretty much. And then the rest is in my carry-on, but yes. Uh, I'm very excited to go back to Montreal. Um, it's such a cool city, so much to see, so much to do, so much to eat. I think the Montreal video, whatever I film while I'm out there, will be the one that comes out after this vlog, so you can look forward to that. And yeah, other than that, I'm just gonna, you know, settle down for the night, do some video editing, edit, finish editing this video, and then um, try and get an early night if I can, because I got a big day of travel tomorrow. Very exciting. Okay, and that's all. I'll, I'll wrap it up here. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's kind of cool 
like all day I was working on editing this vlog, which I usually don't do. I usually like finish filming and then I edit the whole thing, but it's been interesting like editing it as I'm still filming it. It's kind of cool and I'm like really liking how the vlog is turning out so far. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and yeah. Thank you very much again. I appreciate you so very much and I will see you guys in a bit. Bye.